Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and today we're going to be taking a look at a four-prong range receptacle. And of course, I say that very loosely because what this is, is the NEMA 1450R, and this can be used for lots of different things, including you could hook it up technically to a welder, you could hook it up to other large pieces of equipment, drills, saws. If you if this cord was configured this way, you could hook it up to a lot of things, including car chargers, so on and so forth. But today we're going to look at it in the context of being a range receptacle, and you'll understand why by the end of the video. So this one is rated for 50 amps, and it's 125 through 250 volt rating, which is important when you're selecting GFCI protection and you're selecting other protections because sometimes, depending on what code cycle you're in, it has to be rated 125 slash 250 to fall under the certain classifications for GFCI or different you know, protections depending on what area you're in, you'll have to check those specific codes. So when we open this up, this one, this brand is Leviton and I'm pretty pleased with the Leviton brand overall. You know, been using them for a long, long time and they have a proven track record. One thing I do want to note about these that I'll talk about here in a minute is just the overall design flaw of every single brand. It's not just Leviton. You know, we've put a man on the moon, we've come out with LED technology, but we've not addressed how terrible these are to use and install. So let's go ahead and jump into it now. So we take this cover off. Usually it's held by a single screw right here. Sometimes it's very difficult to get in there, but it actually screws back into this mechanism back here, but sometimes it's just hard to get in there. So when we take the cover off, we expose all of our guts. Right here is our ground prong which is in the center right here, or on the lower part of this device right here. And then we have the neutral, which is right here, which extends all the way up to the top. So on this one, the ground is on the bottom, and the neutral is all the way up on the top. Then on the left-hand side would be your A phase or your B phase, but it really doesn't matter if one's on one side or the other because you're going to stand, still end up with the same voltage. But if you wanted to be nice and neat, you could do your A phase on this side, your maybe your black on this side, and your uh, red on this side, however you wanted to handle that. So looking a little bit deeper into this, this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the design flaw. So these right here are notoriously terrible for getting installed, for making work, for tightening down. Now there are some tricks that you can do, like you can curl your wire if the wire is small enough to curl, make it a little bit wider. The range ones aren't as bad as the drier version of this, the drier counterpart, because the wire is a lot thicker on the range than it is on the dryer. So when we take a look at this, you'd stick your wire right here. You don't want your wire sticking too far up you know, you, you got to watch it. This one's, this design's not as bad. Every one of these is different, but you want to kind of cap. Let's see if I can get this back open. These are just hard to use, especially if I don't, here we go. This side's open. So this one, it kind of limits you. If you can look down in there, it limits how high you can put it. It's okay to put it right to the top right there. That's fine. On this one, you know, you could stick it as far up as that. I still would try to cap it toward the end of these brackets. It really doesn't matter as long as you get it in there and you feel like it's secure. But also follow all your manufacturer's instructions. But some of these are designed different. It makes it a little bit harder to decide where to stop your wires at as far as your length goes. One of the difficult things on these is, you know, if you have to come in the back, which is oftentimes, it's a very short bending radius, but you learn how to do it. Oftentimes I'll make them up in my hand and then screw them to the wall, just depending on the scenario. A couple neat things that are printed inside of this one that I really like about this brand are it tells you the wire size ranges. I hope you guys can see that. So this particular model can take a 10 gauge up to a 4 gauge wire. So it can't take any smaller and it can't take any larger with working properly and going in, you know, without going outside of its listing. The tightening specs are built right into this one, which I love because normally it's written on the bag. And if you guys are new to the game, you need to be tightening all of your terminations, including switches, receptacles, the whole nine yards. And you can, uh, that's since 2017, it's been required, the 17 code, but really in other ways in the code, it's been required you know, before that, but it was, you know, specific in the 2017 code and later that you're required to tighten all the things to their torque spec. And right here, this one is for 25 pounds. And that's pretty traditional on these. Even your 
dryer counterparts will actually be 25 pounds as well. So it just must be these type of screws that 25 pounds just must be the proper way to do it. Then here it says replace only with 75 degree receptacles. That's if you go to replace it. Same thing here. It lists the 75 degree C rating. Here is going to be where you can knock out for your three quarter or your one inch. They also come with clamps in order to clamp these down or you can use just a regular Romex style connector. So on the back is pretty basic. It does give you some mounting holes though and sometimes you have to utilize all these. Sometimes you have to utilize that one, that one, and these two here or do another way to mount it. Sometimes you mount them to the floor. Sometimes you mount them to the wall. There's a lot of different ways that these can be mounted here. So with that being said, that is the four wire uh, range receptacle. I do want to talk about why it's a four wire now. So if you've noticed in some homes, you'll have a three prong, which will be missing one of these prongs. Of course, it's in a different shape. And you might ask, well, why is one of them three and why is one of them four? Well, in previous eras, the range and the dryer did not need a neutral. A uh, neutral like we need it today for clocks, timers, all of these different things. A lot of them were mechanical pieces that did not necessarily need a neutral like we need them for digital displays and some of the other things that we use now. So they only ran two hots and a, an equipment ground over to that respective piece of equipment, whether it was a range or whether it was a dryer, because they only needed the two hots for the stove eyes and they needed the ground just in case there was a fault. Well, later we found out that, hey, it's handy to have all these different digital displays and all the different 110 devices that are on, including light bulbs and all these other things that are on our modern day ranges and our modern day dryers. Well, in order to do that, we need a neutral. Well, we had our whole nation had been run in three wires. So instead of making everyone in the nation pull them out, they made a very limited, grandfathered, you know, situation for three wire ranges and three wire dryers. And still to this day, you can replace a like for like with a three, a three wire dryer receptacle or a three wire range receptacle. And they're just allowing you to piggyback that equipment ground and use it as a neutral as well which if you've seen my video, when and why to separate grounds and neutrals, you can see the hazards that this can cause. So when we started designing the new ones, we required a four wire range, which gave us two hots, a neutral, and a dedicated equipment ground so we can separate those neutrals and continue to keep them separate past the first point of disconnect. Now I get this question often. When I run into a situation where there is a three prong receptacle and I have a four prong cord on my dryer or range, what do I do? Well, you always match what's in the wall. So if there's three wires in the wall, you make it a three wire setup and then make sure you properly bond or unbond your range or dryer. Same thing if you see four wires in the wall, you would make the whole setup match four wires, four wire receptacle, four wire cord. If you see three wires, you would do three wire receptacle, three wire cord, and then just make sure that your unit is properly bonded. If you don't understand what that means, then you definitely don't need to be hooking one of these up and you need to do research or contact a qualified licensed electrician and make sure you do everything legally, morally, and ethically because there is a, there is a case that if you do not bond it correctly, you could leave current or voltage voltage floating on the piece of equipment as well as current issues. So there's voltage issues and current issues. If there was ever a leak and you didn't have it properly bonded, you could have standing voltage on the exterior of the equipment. You also could have current issue. Well, you're going to have current issues if you do bond it, but it needs to be bonded above that. I would rather have current flowing at zero volts coming back on the piece of equipment than I would rather have voltage standing at any amount of voltage standing on a piece of equipment that is not properly bonded. But that's a lesson for another day. I hope you guys have a great day. I am the Electrical Code Coach. And listen, I, I know it's tough out there right now. If you need anything from me, personally, professionally, whatever, you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. I'm here to help you. I just want to see you guys win. And until the next video, let's get to it.